Hi everybody, here's a look at a repair slash mod that uh, I did and I use these current limiting diodes that really came in handy. I did another video about these where I put them on the curve tracer and you can, uh, I'll, I'll link that into this video, but basically the whole project started when, when somebody came to me uh, with a broken or a burnt out light bulb that was the backlight for his car stereo LCD. And I said, yeah, sure, no problem. Hey, how about I put some blue LEDs in there instead so you can, you know, have something a little more interesting than boring old light bulb. He said, sure. So I started looking at it. See, here's the front and there's the back. And there was my, my first problem that I ran into was that I had no idea what was positive, what was negative. There's no polarized caps on it. There's no um, LEDs on it either. And in fact, all these little green surface mount things on the front, you'd think they're LEDs, but they're not. Just look at a close up here and you can see the, the filament inside a light bulb that's inside of a green silicone rubber cover. Very, very interesting. Even though this is from 1994, um, I was really surprised that they would be using light bulbs instead of green LEDs, which certainly did exist back then. Maybe green LEDs were just too expensive or too unreliable. I'm really not sure why they would go with light bulbs. But anyway, of course, if I'm gonna be replacing the the backlight with a blue LED, then I need to know the polarity. Since I didn't know that, I threw in a uh, very tiny full wave bridge rectifier. Little tiny thing made by Motorola. But then I ran into another problem, and that is I didn't know the original voltage that was applied to the, the backlight light bulb. Couldn't see any markings on the board anywhere that hinted at the voltage. I mean, of course, I would assume 12 volts to begin with, but when I only applied 5 volts to these green-coated light bulbs, they, they seemed to be very bright, and I didn't want to apply any more because I was afraid of burning them out. And so, since I really didn't have any concrete idea of the, the voltage that would be applied to the, the backlight, then I really didn't want to just have a, a resistor in series with the LED because the LED would vary in brightness according to whatever voltage gets applied to it. That's where we come to these current limiting diodes. I use the 1N5305. Um, I use four of them, two, two pairs, uh, one pair for each blue LED. Here's the, the circuit, the schematic. Just got the, the two input terminals and they go to the full wave ridge rectifier and then output to uh, two branches, each one with a couple of current limiting diodes and the LED. So each LED gets four milliamps flowing through it. And the reason I used two LEDs in the first place is because I was, was not satisfied with the brightness acquired by only one LED. Also, I didn't have a lot of space to work with, so I had to file down the plastic lens of these LEDs a little bit and flatten them out and then mount them on the thing so that the light shines directly into the, the plastic wedge that goes underneath the LCD. On the other side of the circuit board, we've got all the parts here. There's the full wave bridge on the left and then the two pairs of of the current limiting diodes and I did put some insulation underneath these things once I finished just to make sure that those wires don't touch any of the surface mount resistors. But once it was finished then the LEDs shine very very well once I hook it up to 12 volts and these two pictures show that no matter what the polarity whether it's one way or the other way they still light up. It doesn't matter which way the polarity goes. And here's the finished product with the, the original cover put back on with the LEDs inside. I put hot glue on the LEDs too, just to hold them in place. And I gave it to the guy and it apparently works. I haven't heard from him since, so I guess everything's okay. 
I made some cash off of this repair job, and I, and I have these little tiny vintage components to thank. You can see the one um, diode here, one of them on the right side is dated from 1978. So these things have been sitting around for 35 years, and finally I used four of them for this particular job. So there you go. That's a perfect example of what I like to call design for ambiguity because I really didn't, really had very little information to go by with this thing. I had no idea what, what kind of make or model the radio was, and I, and I really didn't, didn't really need to because I was able to, to design a circuit that worked under almost any circumstances that this thing would be subjected to. So please give this video a big thumbs up if you learned something. See you later.